Sup nerds, it's Akra again, here with another build guide. This one is kinda lengthy though, so you better get your coffee ready and stretch your glitching muscles. Today we're building something that I did the first time in my build Serenity at the end of 2019. Since then, I've reused the concept of the TV console many times, and I very often get questions about how it was made, so I figured it was high time I made a tutorial for this one. As usual, this guide depends on you already knowing some basic glitching techniques, but in case you don't, I've left some useful links in the description together with a full item list of what's being used. So put your socks on, grab a drink or something, and let's get started! Start out with measuring out where you want to put your walls. I'm using a blank Riviera partition with a varied wood interior wall on it and some white rectangular partitions dyed soot black. As usual, we're doing the bottom walls first, using the bathroom wall tiles as waymarks for us when placing the walls in the basement. I started out floating the blank partition almost all the way up through the ceiling, just about high enough that we get rid of that bottom trim on the wall. Even if you're doing a lower ceiling and don't need the full height of the wallpaper in the floor above, it's still important that you float it all the way. After that, you proceed to float the bottom white rectangular partitions. Unfortunately for me, I realized I actually did this wrong while I was recording. First of all, my walls were off by one grid snap. Obviously it didn't matter now, because the rest of the house is empty, so I could easily adjust it, but it will matter later on. We'll get to the why later, but it's important here that our walls aren't overlapping the middle where the blank partition is. Line them up so let it end up on the left and right of it. Exactly how high is up to you how close to the floor you want your cutouts on the sides to be. Pixel perfection isn't important here, just float them around the same height. When you're done with the bottom walls, you can place the top walls upstairs. Align them easily using grid snap and float them to the height you want for the cutouts. I use a Riviera wall shelf on a stage panel to make sure they get somewhat even in height. And we're already done floating walls. Next you can place the last of the walls. Just line them up with grid snap, easy peasy.
For the background of the cutouts, I use stage panels instead of rectangular partitions, because they have a much nicer texture that works a lot better in low light settings. Before I start dealing with any furnishings, I sort out a simple fake ceiling using flooring mats. It's just easier to get it out of the way in my opinion, but it'll be easy no matter when you do it, as long as you do it before placing down your tabletop decorations. Now it's time to start on this very simple TV unit. I was definitely not the first one to make one like this, but I have no clue who to give credit for it, so let's just leave it at that. Use two manor fireplaces and turn them backwards to form the TV. Align them using grid snap first, so you know they're centered to the blank partition. Then you can adjust the placement without grid snap to get the thickness just right and get rid of the texture glitching that occurs when two items are perfectly placed on top of each other. Once you got this sorted, you can use a wooden loft to float both of them at the same time. That way you'll ensure that they end up at the exact same height. You can adjust the height later if you need to, so don't worry too much about finding the perfect pixel for now. It is time to take a break from the TV to work on the bench underneath. Since you have the blank partition still sticking through the ceiling in the basement, it's easy to use a stage panel to mark out where the wall is upstairs. Use grid snap to align two Hingen bookshelves to the width you want the bench to be. As you can see, it's easy to adjust this if you want a smaller or wider bench. Once again, you can use the wooden loft to float these two together. To make the next step a little easier alignment-wise, you just float them about the height of the top of the bookshelf and place another two on the same spot, using the floated ones as guides. After placing them, you can continue to float the bookshelves through the ceiling so they stick up through the floor. When you've gotten your desired height of the bench, rotate the bookshelves slightly. Don't rotate them back just yet. Make sure you do this before you float the two bottom bookshelves to form the bottom trim of the bench. When you get them close enough to the top bookshelves, they're going to snap to the same point you're doing the bottom ones. Don't panic though, 
As long as you don't rotate the top ones, they will go back to the position you first rotated them at. So all you gotta do when you're done with the bottom ones is rotating them and only them, then leave the house and come back in again to reset yourself. After that, you can rotate the top shelves in the angle you wanted them. If you get texture glitching on the bench surface, you can offset one of the bookshelves by doing the same technique. Just float them up one pixel, only rotate one of the top ones, then leave the house and come back in to reset what you didn't rotate. The front of the bench is using the back side of the bathroom wall tiles to form a concrete texture panel. Place two wooden beams like a crane on a stage panel and place one of the tiles as low as possible on the lower beam. Pick up the crane by the higher beam and lower it into the floor like this. Get the height right first by adjusting it to the bench, then you can carefully align the tile horizontally by moving the stage panel. If you've done this right, your tiles should stay where they are after you've glitched them off of your beam and moved it away. This is when it matters if you floated the blank partition all the way up and if you have any white rectangular partitions clipping in behind them. Since the tiles are wall mounted items, they'll snap to any wall surface in their near vicinity, so you have to make sure that there aren't any there for them to snap to. On the blank partition, the wall surface stops by the trim, but the white rectangular partitions are all wall surfaces, so we can't have any of that. Anyway, if all is well with the first one, you can repeat the crane technique for the second one. As tempting as it might be, it's better to do them separately rather than doing them both together. First of all, because it's easier to adjust them to the correct width, but also because if you do them together, they're going to texture glitch and that doesn't look very nice. There we go, the bench is done! Now it's time to put the finishing touch on the TV. For the lit up button, I usually use the Otter Otter Lantern. Just place it, turn it on and float it in where it should be, using a beam and a Riviera wall shelf. Do note though, since the Hingan bookshelf is technically a table, the lantern will snap to the surface of it, so the distance between the bench and the TV will always have to be the same. Just to make sure I've got the placements right, I force the lantern to snap by leaving the house and coming back in again. I just kinda happened to hit the right height here anyway, so I didn't need to adjust anything. But if you do, this is when you wanna find your perfect TV height. Now we're almost done, I promise. Just some shelves for the cutouts and lighting left, and I'll show you how to do that really easily. Pull out the stage panel again and turn on grid snap. Place two wooden steps with the lower steps so they'll end up on your visible wall side. With grid snap on, it's easy to align them right on top of each other, then you can work out at what height you want them by moving the stage panel into the wall. When you figure that part out, you place two more on the other side of the panel. This way you can easily see that you've got your cutout shelves on the same levels and can use a simple wall mount glitch to leave them in place, one pair on each side.
Now, you all know how important lighting is to me. Sure, you can skip the extra lighting here to save slots, but the ambience you get from it here is worth it. Actually, this is one of the things I've been asked about the most ever since I did it the first time, and that is how to make these cutouts light up. It's super simple. Just get some OP clay lanterns from the vendor and put them inside the wall. Two per cutout, one in the top middle and one in the bottom. It's super easy to place the bottom one just by turning off surface placement. One of the most important things in this guide though, turning your light setting down to zero. The lower the setting, the more of a glow you'll get from the cutouts. Then of course, we need to light up this middle section a little bit too. So here's for the extra lighting, all hail the almighty glade lantern. And here's the finished product! I threw in some decorations around it and this is how it looks! I hope this was a helpful guide and an inspiring little light to your housing adventures. If you liked this video, don't forget to let me know by pressing the like and subscribe buttons below. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to see me do a guide of in the future, let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching! Thank you.